Togetherness the way it is seen in the Zink family is hard to find. Going back home regularly is routine for the many descendants of Anton and Anna Zink, natives of Germany who came to make their home in Beaver Creek, Ohio. Actually, Anton Zink, son of Xavier and Teresa Zink, who was born in 1846 in Fottenbach, Baden, Germany, received permission from his parents to come to America at only 14 years old. He came directly to the farm of his uncle, where he made his home in the northwest corner of Beaver Creek Township. Anton attended Ailey School, located on Kemp Road at that time. He was a devout Catholic and a charter member of Holy Trinity Church. In 1876, he took another trip to Germany, and deciding America was the most wonderful country to make a home, he invited his future bride, Anna Ketterer, to come back to America with him. He and Anna became parents of eight sons and two daughters. The three youngest sons, Ted, Frank, and Mox, and eldest daughter, Christine, never married and lived together on the farm. Zink Field at Beaver Creek High School was named for Frank, who taught school here for many years. Home is Beaver Creek for the Zinks, and that fact isn't likely to change. I've always been proud to be a Zink. When I got married, I dropped my middle name and use zinc instead, then I'd be a zinc for the rest of my life. But my family never bore the zinc name. My grandma, Louise Zink Bierschen, was one of the two zinc daughters of Anton and Anna Zink, and the only daughter to marry. Louise was a graduate of Miami University and taught in a one-room schoolhouse in Beaver Creek. Aunt Teeny worked at NCR. John Bierschen was Louise's husband, and my mother and uncle, Anna and Herman Bierschen, were the only two grandchildren without the Zink name. My mother, Anna Bierschen, married Richard Leibold, and I am Mary Ann Leibold Shane, the oldest of the eight Leibold children, wife of Jim Shane, and mother of five children and grandmother to 16 grandchildren. I am Shirley Zink. I have been married to Jimmy Zink for 63 friggin' years. <laughs> and the reason that we have been married so long is pure perseverance on my part. Thank you very much. As a child with my, all my 20, 20 other cousins, and when you add me, I have 21 of them, but the, the Uncle Frank, Uncle Max, and Uncle Ted, who never married, and Aunt Tina was the girl that never married, and they were played quite a role in my life. And uh, the one thing I always remember is that uh, you will always hear, a man is as good as his word. I also remember how welcome the uncles and Aunt Tini would make us feel when we would go out to see them. Uncle Ted would play the piano, and sometimes my mother would sing, and um, the Uncle Frank would tell jokes and tell about the war, and Uncle, Fr and Uncle Max would show Serena and me a magazine usually serves in Roebuck, and we pick out which girl is the prettiest on which page. My favorite zinc memories would be the closeness of our family, the time that we've spent together over the years, and just total family. Eating donuts from grandma's because um, um, my cousin ate, ate that with me. Uh, the Zink kid camp out. Because I'm with my cousins and my uncle. Because we're sleeping out in the dark and, and it's fine. The 
uh, I can re remember after milking, my uncles would squirt milk at me as they hand milked the cows. And uh, they always were feeding the cats. And But then after they mail milk, the ne next morning, they would load the milk in 10 gallon cans and we would take it all down to, uh, we drove to Dayton and I usually rode with Uncle Ted or Uncle Mox did that and uh, and sold the milk. And but we drank more milk that was unpasteurized before we uh, took it down to uh, the producers with they processed the milk to sell at the stores. And I can remember also the, in after they built the, the new house, uh, they always used the old house where my uncles, uh, my dad and my uncles and my aunt grew up. It was a one, one, uh, one room big, but uh, one, uh, one room, and I, they had they slept upstairs. And dad, my dad was telling me about the. Uh, uh, he could watch the, the stars through the cracks of the the roof, and uh, and the, the snow sometimes would fall in on them. But I mean, of course, there was no there was no uh, central heating at that time, and they enjoyed that so much. And, but I the thing I remember is after we get, get up uh, at, at five o'clock and milk the herd, which was Usually at that time, about 25 cows. Um, we would go back and instead of in, in, eating in the big house, they, uh, uh, they always had the breakfast, potatoes and quite a meal uh, after milk. And that would be about uh, maybe seven o'clock. And uh, it was just a, quite a memory to, uh, to share with everybody. Well, when I was a little girl, maybe six or seven, I can picture Grandma gathering eggs, and she had a little bonnet on. And then as far as Grandpa's concerned, when we go out, my dad would, Dad, who's Andy, would go over and sit in the corner with Grandpa, and they'd talk together in, in German. On Sunday nights, we would visit the farm after dinner. We'd talk and we'd watch TV and we'd listen and sing with Uncle Ted playing the accordion or the piano. We had pop and snacks before we went home. The adults would eat molasses bread, which was peanut butter and molasses. And we would have snacks like Cracker Jacks, Juicy Fruit Gum, and Three Musketeers candy bars. When Aunt Teeny and the boys aged, my mother had them for Sunday dinners with my grandparents and our families. Weekly Sunday suppers followed by games of euchre. They were fun. My favorite Zink family memory would be Christmas at the Hall. The Hall is our family potluck dinner that we do the first Tuesday of every month and uh, it's been going on for over, almost a hundred years but the first Tuesday in December is extra special because we celebrate Christmas as a family. We had larger than normal crowds, more family members showed up, bigger potluck, better food, um, but we also had a visit from Santa Claus. At the uh, end of the after dinner the uh, the kids would gather around and sing Christmas carols and when Jingle Bells came, that was Santa's cue to come into the hall. All of us had a chance to sit on Santa's lap and uh, ask for something that we wanted for Christmas and of course, uh, get a candy cane. But I think special about this is, I don't know when the tradition of Santa coming to the hall began, but it's still around today. And uh, my kids have had the opportunity to uh, sit on Santa's lap and get a candy cane, which I think makes it extra special. And of course the hall at Christmas, Easter, summer get togethers and Tuesday monthly dinners. A wonderful time at the hall that we had, which I almost was too young, but my older cousins um, 
enjoyed it much more than I did. I remember each Saturday from age five on meeting Aunt Teeny and Grandma for Mass at Holy Trinity Church in Dayton, Ohio. We would sit by the nativity window because that beautiful stained glass window was donated to the church by Anton and Anna Zink and their family. The beautiful nativity which graces St. Albert the Great Church at Christmas was given one piece at a time on Christmas Eve to my grandfather, John Bierschen, every year for his help with the farm and family from Grandpa and Grandma, Great Grandpa and Grandma Zink. What a treasure for me to see during the holiday season at the nativity that was used at my grandparents' house now being displayed in our church. What togetherness, what a legacy, what a family. It's a pleasure to be able to share some thoughts that I love to think of. And it's a pleasure to, to be part of this uh, celebration for the Zen heritage. Thank you. Sing a song of long ago when things were green and moving slow, and people stop to say hello, or they say hi to you. Would you like to come over for tea? Misses and me It's a real nice way to spend a day in Dayton, Ohio On a lazy Sunday afternoon in 1903 Let's sing a song of long ago When things could grow and days 
waves flowed quietly The air was clean and you could see And folks were nice to you Would you like to come over for tea With the missus and me Way to spend a day in Dayton, Ohio, on a lazy Sunday afternoon in 1903.